On the dashboard, you can set up your core inputs or drivers and see the core financials and core charts related to the model. So let's start the model setup from the launch date. For example, your business will launch in May 20. Also, you can see that each yellow cell has this notification window with explanation of what you're supposed to input in this cell. So it will help you to understand and navigate across the model easily. So the next step is to set up your marketing budget and visitors assumptions. You have two options in the model, which is online marketing and offline marketing. If you don't need, for example, offline marketing, you can just clean these cells and you will have only online marketing in your model. If you need both, just adjust these assumptions as needed and it will drive your model. So let me show you how it works. For example, for online marketing, you can put annual marketing budget, for example, $100,000 and each next year it will be additional $20,000. The next step is to set up the cost per visit. It can be $1, $1.2, $1 $1.4, $1 $1.6, and $1.8 by years. The same idea for offline marketing. And as a result, you can see the total visitors which you have by years. And the next step is to convert these visitors to new customers across the conversion rates across your sales funnel. So first of all, you have conversion rates from visitors to sales opportunities. Let's pretend this is 50%, for example. It can be changed by years as well. 52, 54, 56, 58. So 67,000 of visitors will be converted to 33.9 thousands of sales opportunities in 2020. The next step is to convert your sales opportunities to engaged opportunities. Let's pretend this is 20% and it can be equal across all the years. So 20% from 32.9 thousands of sales opportunities. This is 6.8 roughly engaged opportunities. And you can see this is also changeable by years. The next step is to convert your engaged opportunities to new customers. This is the final step of your sales funnel within the model, so you can put 10%, for example, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So 10% from 6.8 thousands of engaged opportunities will give you 679 new customers for the 2020. So after you will set up everything, revenue, expenses, cox, wages, and all other assumptions. You may review your core financials and review your revenue breakdown by services or products, your profitability, which includes revenue, EBDA and EBDA percentage, the cash flow chart by years and the cumulative cash flow also by years. On the financial chart step, you may see your main financial KPIs on the two sets of charts, which is the breakdown of two years by months and the breakdown of five years by months. So on the top, you may see the EBIT amount. The next set of charts will show you the revenue breakdown by products. The next operating cash flow broken down by cash inflow and cash outflow. The next set of charts will show you the cash balance by months for the two years and for the five years. And on the last set of charts, you will see the EBDA as a yellow line and the breakdown of this EBDA, which includes the revenue, COX and OPEX. On the operational chart step, you may see your main operational matrix for the two years broken down by months and for the five years broken down by months as well. So on the first set of charts, you may see the new customers break down by your services or products also for two years by months and for the five years by month. On the income statement tab, you may see your main components of your profit and loss, which is total revenue, total cost of goods sold, gross margin, total variable expenses, total admin salaries and wages, total fixed expenses, EBDA, depreciation and amortization, EBIT, 
interest expense, net profit before tax, your corporate tax, and as a result, net profit after tax. Please note that each category has its own subcategories, so you may click on this plus button and see the detailization, for example, for fixed expenses, or for variable expenses, or for example, for the revenue. On the cash flow statement, you may see your cash flow broken down by cash flow from operating activities, cash flow from investing activities, and cash flow from financing activities. The same information you may see on the cash flow statement in a direct method, operating, investing, and financing activities, but in more collapsed form. Just easier to see the information here. And the balance sheet will show you the breakdown of your current assets, non-current assets, current liabilities, non-current liabilities and equity by its subcategories. The summary of three statements you may find on the financial statement summary tab. On the top you have income statement broken down by five years and the selected year which you can change here broken down by months. Below you may see the same information on the chart form. The next set of tables and charts will show you the balance sheet main KPIs broken down by 5 years and selected year by months. And the last part will show you the cash flow statement breakdown for the 5 years and for 12 months for the selected year, as well as charts with the same information. On the benchmark KPI step, you may see 5 industry-specific benchmarks and you may see the comparison of these benchmarks with what is calculated in your model. So you have gross margin percentage, net profit percentage, direct wages as a percentage of revenue, average monthly revenue per active customer, and active customers per one direct FTE ratio. All these yellow sales are changeable. For example, you know that gross margin percentage for your industry, for your country is 65%. You may see this is changed on this chart immediately. And to the right of these yellow cells, you may see the values calculated by the model based on assumptions which you set on revenue, expenses, COGS, and all other assumption steps. On the graphical form, you may see also comparison of gross margin calculated by the model, which is blue, and industry gross margin, which is orange. The same net profit, direct wages as a percentage of revenue, average monthly revenue per active customer, and active customers per one direct FT. You may see the revenue summary for the main revenue streams broken down by years as an absolute values and as a percentage breakdown. The same information is reported in here on the charts. Also, you are able to select specific year and to see the monthly run rate and revenue depth for these revenue streams. On the bottom of top revenue report, you may see the revenue bridge and you may see the total revenue for the starting year and for the ending year, which you may play using these setups. And you may see the factors of growth of this revenue broken down by revenue streams. The same idea is used on the top expenses tab. You may see top four expenses streams and all other expenses collapsed in one line. Also, this is broken down by absolute values and percentage breakdown. The same information you may find on the charts. Also, expenses depths, monthly and on rate, visibility to change the year, and expenses breach with factors of expenses growth from one year to another year. The color coding in the model is very simple. You may change any yellow cell in any yellow sheet within the model. This means that this yellow cell has some input, assumption or driver which impacts the calculation within the model. Blue sheets means that on these sheets there are some charts, reports and other information which can be useful for reporting purposes. On the tabs without color you have some extra calculations related to revenue, to debts, equity, inventory, and everything which is needed for the report, reporting. 
Additionally, you have Contents tab, which allow you to navigate across the model very simple. So you may click on any report and you can go back. It is broken down by reports, assumptions, statements and setup. There is short explanation about what each tab does. But if you want to know more, you can go to how to and to see more detailed, ex detailed explanation of what each tab does and what inputs you may find on this sheet and what kind of outputs you may find on, th on this sheet as well. Any header of this section is also clickable. So you may click on, for example, book assets and you go directly to this tab. On the revenue tab, you may set up the main revenue assumptions for the model. So let me show you how it works. So first of all, you need to set up your services names or product names, for example, offering one or whatever name you need. Also, if you don't need all five services or products, you can just clean assumptions for fourth and fifth and have only three offerings. The next step is to set up your starting number of customers. If you have some active customers as of the start of the year, so you can put some numbers, for example, 50, 60 for each service. If you don't have any active customers, you can just clean and start from zero active customers. The next step is to allocate your new customers by different services. So it's changeable by years. For example, for services A, it can be 10, 15, 12, etc. And you can adjust to have 100% on the total, some other service, for example, 25 and 20. So now you have 100% for all the years. The next set of assumptions is to set up your lifetime in months. Let's pretend that in services A, average customer will live in five months, services B, type 6, 10, 12, and 15 months. To the right, you may see the calculation of active customers by years, depends on this lifetime. If you change something, for example, 8, you may see the changes in calculations. This means that because of your new customer's life more, you'll have more active customers. On the bottom, you may see the total. And the next step is to set up the pricing. First of all, you should understand of how much in average billable hours per month per active customers each service will require. For example, in services A, average customer will have 100 billable, billable hours per month, 110, 120, 130, and 140. And the final step is to set up the price. On the seasonality tab, you may see the setup of marketing expenses, seasonality assumptions across the year by months. So you have yellow cells to set up your seasonality. It can be, for example, 15, 10, 5, 10, 8, 6, 7, 5, 10, 15, 5, and 5. As you may see, I just set up the breakdown of marketing expenses by year and I see the check is red. That's because the total is 101%, means something is wrong here. So let's fix it in October 14%. So now check is green and check is 100%, which means everything is good here. You may see also the chart below with the graphical explanation of how your marketing expenses are broken down by months. If you don't really need the seasonality for marketing expenses, you can just put 1 divided by 12, copy this across all the months, and you will see that your marketing expenses now is flat. So no changes across the months, just equal amounts each month. On the COX tab, you may find six categories or components of your COX. One of them is predefined, which is direct salaries and wages. 
I'll explain a bit later how to drive this on the direct wages tab. Other five categories are available, so you can change the names. I don't know, for example, hosting. So you can change the Cox assumptions, for example, 15% of revenue. And on the top, you may see the main driver of calculation for the Cox, which is total revenue by months. And here you may change the assumptions, which is a percentage of total revenue. Below you may see the categories and calculations of Cox components by months. And finally, in income statement under Cox total, you may see all the components of Cox broken down by months and broken down by categories. On the direct wages tab, you have 19 categories to set up your direct headcount. So let me show you how it works. First of all, you have four different subcategories, and let's go one by one. First subcategory has five placeholders, for example, account executive or SDR, and each one has its own basis and parameter. Parameter in this case, this is one FG per X basis and basis this is new customers per month means that for example I will set 15 for account executives each 15 new customers within service A by month will require one additional FT the calculation of number of this headcount you may see here this is by years also you can set up the annual salary per FT for example $25,000 the annual salary rise, for example, 5%, 4, 3, 2, average monthly bonus per headcount, 10%, and payroll tax rate, 12%. If you don't need them, you can just clean this, or this, or both. Below you may see the calculation of your annual salary depends on base annual salary, and annual salary growth or raise. Below you may see the calculation of headcount by months for these categories, monthly by salaries by categories by months, monthly bonus and payroll taxes also by categories and by months. The next section consists of different bases which is active customers, for example customer success, so it can be per each 20 active customers you have one new FT or headcount. The same annual salary, annual salary growth if it's needed, monthly bonus and tax rate. The third subcategory has a trigger which is billable hours, means that for each, for example, 160 hours you need engineer, so if you have 320 billable hours, you will need two engineers, obviously. The same idea of annual salary, salary growth, monthly bonus and payroll tax rate. And in the last section you can just set up manually, for example, manager, this hire date, for example, March, fire date can be the end of the model or some specific date, again, annual salary, 50,000s. You need to input the average number of headcount, it can be one, always, or you can hire, for example, in year two, two managers, then three, four, and five. So below you may see the calculation, it is hired in March, as we set up March of the start date, starting from January it's two, then three, and etc. And finally, in income statement, under Cox, you have direct salaries and wages, which is a total of bonuses, payroll tax. On the admin wages tab, you can set up up to 19 categories for your admin staff. Let me show you how it works. For example, managers. This hire date starting, for example, from February 20 till the end of the model. You can adjust annual salary per one headcount, for example, $40,000. Then you should input number of admin employees. Let's pretend in the 2020 it will be one, then two, three, four, and five. 
that also you can input annual salary rise. So, for example, 3% of annual salary first year, 4 next, 5 and 6. Also, here you have set up for the monthly bonus, for example, 5% per month, and the payroll tax rate, for example, 12. Below you may see the calculation of annual salary, depends on the annual salary for the base year and for the annual salary rise. Also here you can see the calculation of number of headcounts, it starts in February because we set up February start of hire. Here you can have a monthly base salaries, monthly bonus calculation and monthly base taxes, which is payroll taxes. And under income statement you have total admin salaries and wages section where we see the breakdown of all your headcounts categories and the breakdown the values by months. On the variable expenses tab you can input your variable expenses as a percentage of total revenue. Let me show you how it works. For example, bank fees and your bank fees is 2.5 percentage of your revenue. So in the same way as your revenue grows over time, you may see that bank fees will grow as a percentage of this total revenue. The same way you can input other variable expenses, like for example, 5% direct labor, like 15% of total revenue, and below you may see the calculation of these variable expenses by months. So these expenses will be connected to the income statement tab, section variable expenses, and you may see these line items by months and break broken down by expenses types. On the fixed expenses tab you may input up to 15 line items for your fixed expenses. Let me show you how it works. For example, we have utilities. You will start pay starting from March 20 till the end of the model, which is December 24. Let me see it here. Let's pretend periodicity will be daily with the amount of $50 per day. So you may see this amount in here. It is calculated based on count of days within this month. So obviously in March 20 you have 31 days. That's why you will have 1550. In April you have 30 days. This means this will be $1500. Also you have ability to input some growth rate year over year. Once you input this growth rate you will see that your utilities will grow over year over year. Let me give you a couple of other expenses types, for example, advertising. Let it start in March and finish in August 24. This will be on weekly basis with amount of $100 without any growth. So start, starting from March till August 24, you have $400 per month, which is four weekly payments each month. And that's it. Another option is B weekly, for example, $500. You can start from July, for example, and you'll have two payments, which is two B weekly payments within the month. $500 multiplied by two, you have $1,000 per month. Again, you can input some growth rate and you will see that your advertising expenses will grow year over year till the August 24, which is the last date of this expense type. Another option, office setup, which can be one-time payment, which will happen in February 20, with an amount of $5,000. Obviously, you should not input any gross rates because this is just one-time fee. And you may see that office setup will happen in February 20 with this amount. Another option, insurance. 
let it be start from January 20 till the end of the model and it can happen monthly with $1,000 per month with 5% of growth first year, 3% of growth second year, 2% of growth third and 1% year number four. So you may see this calculation here starting from January 21 it will grow for 5% which is $50 and starting from January 22, it will grow for 3%, which is additionally $32. Another option, quarterly, you may see that insurance will be paid $1,000 each quarter. You can start it, for example, from February, and this will be shifted to one month forward. Another option, semi-annually, in this case you will have insurance payments once per half a year, again with a percentage of growth. And the last option is annual payments or yearly payments. You'll pay one time per 12 months, starting from February till December 24. For each expense type, you can use growth rate and the calculation you may see in here. Also in income statement, you may find total fixed expenses group if you will ungroup this section you can see these amounts broken down by months and by fixed expenses line items on the capex step you may input up to 20 development expenses categories let me give you a couple of examples so for example office development is purchase date February 20, we spending of $10,000. And you also can input payment delay. What does it mean? Let me set up two months, for example. It means that this amount will be accrued in February because of purchase date is February, but paid development expenses will be in April 20 for this office development. And you will have some balance of CAPEX accounts payable for two months. Let me give you another example. Other development expenses. Let's say March 20, $5,000 is zero payment delay. This means that this amount is accrued in March and paid in March as well. The total amount of development expenses you may find in asset step, by default it has useful time for five years for the calculation of depreciation. You may find calculation of depreciation for development expenses in here. Here you may, you may also find capital expenditure and closing net book value. Additionally, you have up to six placeholders for other assets, for example, other assets with useful time of 10 years, with cost of $25,000. And this launch date in April. You may find it in here. You can see capital expenditure. You may see book depreciation by months for this amount. And you may see closing net book value. The total amount of depreciation you may find in income statement. On the cash flow, you may find cash flow from investing activities for these assets. And on the balance sheet, you may find fixed assets amount under non-current assets and capex prepayment and capex payables as well. On the capitalization table, you can input different founders and investors contributions broken down by different dates of funding with different cost of share for each series and you can see the dilution of shares after each round and pre-money total equity and post-money total equity. Let's pretend that we have two founders, founder 1, founder 2. So total amount of shares for founder 1 can be 10,000 for founder number 2. 20,000. Let's imagine that cost of share will be $2 for 
and the date of funding is February. This means that investment for founder 1 is $20,000, for founder 2 is $40,000. In total, they invest $60,000, which you may see here. The dilution is 34, 33 to 67 percentage of shares. So let's pretend that for series A we have one investor and the date of issuance is May, cost per share is $5 per share and number of shares is 1000. So total amount of investment will be $5000. You may see that before the Series A total equity was $16,000, after $65,000 and Investor 1 will have 3.23 percentage of shares and the shares of Founder 1 and Founder 2 also diluted. 32.26 and 46.52 percentage. You can also input some amounts for Series B and Series C the same way you can set up the date, cost of share and up to 5 investors is up to 5 placeholders for number of shares. The amounts of funding you may see in the cash flow, in the ordinary equity risings and you may see the balance sheet which shows you the total equity by months. Also on the top of the dashboard have debt assumptions. Let me show you how it works. So for the each debt we are able to select the debt type. There are two debt types in the model which is annuity and usual. Annuity means that each monthly payment which consists your debt repayment plus interest expenses will be equal each month. In case if you select usual your main debt repayments will be equal parts and interest will be just interest on the debt's closing balance. Let me give you an example how it works. So you may input an amount of the debt, the launch date, term will be 60 months and interest can be 5%. You may also input the grant which is just simple amount which is paid in some specific months and that's it. No repayments, no terms in terms of interest. So all the calculations of the debt you may see on the capital tab. Calculations for the debt number one, debt number two, debt number three, total debts with grants. These calculations impacts income statement, interest expenses, the cash flow, interest paid, debt drawdowns, debt repayments and on the balance sheet we have the debt closing balance. On the top of the dashboard you have currency denomination and taxes setup. So currency inputs means that you can input all your drivers for the model using one currency. You have currency outputs. It can be the same as currency inputs and it can be different from currency inputs. So let me give an example. When you input in United States dollars, you have euro as an output and for this case you can set up currency exchange rate. This is 1.2 for example. In this case you will have in the model all your inputs in United States dollars, all your outputs in euros and there will be conversion rate between currency inputs and currency outputs. Additionally you have denomination which means that you can denominate all your outputs on the reports. In this example we have denomination is 1000, means that your outputs is denominated by 1000. You can select millions. You may see that now it is in million dollars. You can set also billions or without any denomination. 
Additionally, you have corporate tax setup. You can change this number and this will impact tax expenses in your income statement. I hope you enjoyed my video. Thanks for reviewing this. Uh, you can find more on my website finmodelslab.com and we'll see you later in the next videos.